Salutations, my divine friends, and welcome to meditation on the last of October, moving towards Halloween. Ooh. Hope everyone has their costumes ready. I'll probably be Glinda the Good Witch. Huh? <laughs> and I will then move through the cosmos on my star tetrahedron, my sacred vehicle. Power and love unified. The Christ matrix from which the doorway opens within the center of the star tetrahedron. Spirit arises forth and all of the possibilities within the void are there waiting to be brought forth into manifestation. And it is through then the Christ matrix that that, of course, happens. The entire cosmos is a manifestation of the Christ matrix. Even an atom is a star tetrahedron with a doorway in the middle. It's where its life force comes from. They say an atom can never be destroyed. It's simply the life force of spirit is always arising forth from the very center. Tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about emotions. It's um, really the key to enlightenment. I had a couple of clients this last week, and like most all of us, really brilliant people, very dynamic, radiant heart, lots of creative imagination flowing, as well as kind of deep intuitive, and then a deep relationship with spirit. And so quite illuminated, but still things dogging their heels. And those things that dog our heels are simply emotions. And most people somewhat dislike emotions. But in fact, as I was telling these two clients that emotions are really the gift that spirit brings to us in order to find what does not yet feel loved. Because when we love ourselves completely and totally, we then no longer need or want or desire the vibrational frequency of the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical has now matched the frequency of source, which is love. And we truly feel and experience oneness within the body of the divine. It's like we're swimming in this ocean of pure grace. And as I was telling a client today, there's no fear, there's no worry. There's not the experience that you're fearful about the death of a friend or the passing of someone you might love or what's going on in the world. You know that the vibration of source that is there very beautifully flowing with you is holding all creation within the ocean of oneness and whatever is unfolding for every person, the soul, their divine and sacred spirit is simply architecting it for them. <clears throat> and so this one client was worried about her daughter, seven-year-old daughter who's in school now, and being a little bit bullied by some of the other students. And, of course, she was worried about it, concerned about it. And I was telling her that the daughter is the one that chose that. It sounds like that's far-fetched, but, in fact, the soul as it downloads us into this dimensional world, it then has all of the information that we need to grow. And so by experiencing at this very tender age bullying, this child who is very sensitive, even a little bit uh, intuitive, you might say, is going to grow up to be able to hold their space. They felt what it feels like to be overshadowed and is simply going to develop within them the ability to hold their space and be dynamic with their gifts. And so there's nothing to worry about. There's no concern that the mother needs to have. 
as she continues to love and from her heart find, well, what are the choices that from love and truth are always going to support her? Then it is in part of the soul that is within the child also growing together with her. If the mother is coming from a place of fear and worry, she then is imposing that vibration upon the child. And we experienced as children this same imposition. <clears throat> We're not going to call it in error because, as I said earlier, it's really the gift that the soul brings us in order to master that which is not yet loved. And if we're willing to go into the emotion, not as the personality, when the personality experiences an emotion, it wants to emote it, it wants to become it. So, for instance, say something, you emote it because you're feeling sad. Well, if we go into the sadness and begin to think about, well, when was I sad before? And when might I be sad in the future? And what if this happens? I'll be sad again. The mind is caught in simply examining possibilities that really have no reality. If we dive into the emotion of sadness as the soul, the soul is the one that created as a child the opportunity to feel sad and possibly unloved by the parental figures so that we could grow up today and feel the sadness and then bring the light of the soul in. And by feeling the sadness, which is a darker vibration, we could gently fall through it. When we judge it or dislike it, it crystallizes it and hardens it. And then there's the emoting of it. But when we don't resist it and approach it from the level of the soul who created it for a purpose, we can then simply flow effortlessly through that emotion and it becomes a pathway. And that pathway is then taking us back through time, space, to when the moment began that the child felt overshadowed by someone in time, space back then. So we're not becoming the emotion. In fact, the soul is tasting it. It's experiencing it. It wants to know how emotions work within this dimension. And knowing that once love comes, the emotion just like smoke disappears, which not only allows us a greater sense of self-love within, but at the same time, when we see sadness or loneliness in the world, we have compassion. We realize that their soul is giving them an opportunity to grow. We don't need to take their sadness away. That's manipulation and control. We can be there in compassion and share wisdom and truth, but we're not trying to take it away. If we give them the wisdom and the knowledge that is simply the soul divine within them, giving them information to find and feel the emotion and love themselves, then they can use that to grow as well. But if you try and take it away, you can probably Again, give them a sense of peace for the moment. But because you didn't give them the information on how to find, well, where did the sadness originate in their childhood? And then take care of it back there in time space. It'll simply show up again for them. So imagine you're back there in time and space as a child and you're simply within your feeling body. We know that the mind doesn't develop till age seven. And so whatever is going on within the family unit, the child is simply taking it in. And we would like to believe it's the past. It happened back then. But for the soul, it simply creates a gestalt of experience that is the past, the now, the future. And within our linear three-dimensional world, we can only watch it frame by frame, just like a movie, frame by frame. And we say, this is the past. This is the now, this will be the future. But because it's one simultaneous impulse from the soul, whatever is happening back there in time space that we call the past, it's still happening. And so like waves or ripples upon an ocean, there's a ripple of sadness coming from back there, from that childlike part of us. It then waves through our body as an emotion. If we stop in that moment, 
and realize the emotion is rising forth within me for a purpose. Not to judge it or criticize or try and get rid of it, but to realize it's a doorway that can take me back so that I can be with the child, not as the personality, because the personality can't move through time space. The soul which created that whole scenario, the soul of golden liquid light can go through the emotion. We're now back there as this divine guardian angel standing beside the child. We can experience who might be there in ignorance. We're not judging them or criticizing them. We're not even calling them wrong. We're simply saying inappropriate. That here is a child that is a jewel of great divine beauty. And your ignorance, you are overshadowing it with judgment or criticism or some belittling, which then creates a counterclockwise spiral upon the child of sadness or loneliness. That ripple is still rippling. And it ripples through you and your body today. And if you find the emotion and dance with it, you can then change the ripple back then by simply removing the loneliness, by giving the child the right to have an energy like a warrior, to let the child be a warrior of light and to stand up for itself because the child is the only one that has a body. And as the child becomes a warrior of light, it is able then to move out of its space that ignorant energy. And so the ripple is no longer rippling from the past because if it's rippling from the past, it's going to ripple out in front of you and it's going to attract to you something that causes you sadness. And you're going to say, that is happening to me. But it's the ripples of consciousness from the past that are creating what we experience today. And so there, yes, there are ripples of love and there's ripples of joy and there's ripples of gratitude. And those are positive spirals of joy and happiness and peace. And they ripple out and attract to us goodness and grace, prosperity and joy. But the ripples that are counterclockwise spirals, live spell backwards, E-V-I-L, which is darkness, is simply showing us that something wasn't loved. That's all darkness is, showing us something was not loved. And if we're in judgment and within the mind, we go, oh, that's terrible. It shouldn't have happened. That's bad. And then we're in judgment and criticism and nothing's going to change. You've got to be the compassionate soul that created the moment for a purpose. It's a gift. And if you then allow the golden light to come in and you're now moving back through that ripple, you're following it. The emotion of feeling, and now you're back there. And you give the child the right to move out of its space. The ignorance that was imposed upon it. If it's abandonment, and that's one of the, work, the energies this woman is working with today, a feeling of abandonment. I said, if you're feeling abandoned, you've got to recognize that feeling, but realize no one was there. And so the child has got to go into the next room, grab him by the scruff of the neck, the mother, father, drag him back in the room and be the warrior that kicks him out of the room saying, you have no right to abandon me. You are not my mother nor my father. The divine soul standing here beside me created me. It gave me life. This is my mother and father and sacred source. You're not hurting your biological parents. You're not doing anything to them. You're simply saying you cannot abandon me. I am a child that has energy and power. I'm changing what happened. And that moment, there's no longer the ripple of abandonment. And so you will not create a relationship that abandons you or a job that now kicks you out. It's the ripples from the past that are flowing through us that are creating every incident we meet. And it causes stress. It causes emotions that bother us. When we don't find the emotion and deal with it, it begins to be then dis-ease, which then affects the physical form. And all of this is but the soul seeking to get your attention to show you that there is something in the past that is feeling unloved and unaccepted. It's not so much about the now, 
We know that we are loving and generous and lighthearted and happy people. This particular woman today, I was telling her that from your heart, there is this exquisite, beautiful kind of light pink glow of energy. And it flows from you like Niagara Falls. But beneath Niagara Falls is a little girl who would like to have maybe a sip of water. That's how in separation this person was from that child within. And they knew by work that we had done together before that the child was the one that was really seeking to come back into life and light. But it's so easy to forget that in our world today. Things start bombarding us and things start happening to us. The job is lost. The relationship isn't happening. Prosperity isn't flowing. And we're saying, that's happened to me. I've got to fix it. I've got to take care of it. And now our energy is out here in this moment trying to change the ripples. But the ripple is from the past. It's always from the past. That's emotion. And it is always a gift from the soul showing you how you can love yourself more, find freedom within this dimension to be so totally loved within. You feel the vibration of source within. I am alive with oneness. I vibrate with source. There's no fear, no worry, no unhappiness. I have compassion for all that happens in the world. I observe it. I don't judge it. I don't criticize it. I don't dislike it because it causes no vibration within me. That's freedom. And that is what we call enlightenment. As Buddha said, you are in equanimity. You are equal with all things around you and happening in the world. Because you truly see and know it is but the divine playing a part to continue to grow and to unfold in its many, many different parts. Like the thousands of fish in the ocean, there are thousands of people and incidents swimming in this beautiful ocean of consciousness. And we are fortunate because we know we live within this ocean of consciousness. When we forget about it and the magic within, the child then ripples out in the ocean something that is trashy. We go, well, where did that trash come from? If we follow the ripple back to source, we see it's simply a part of ourselves that was unloved. And we're not judging or criticizing or disliking anyone. We're simply saying inappropriate. But to change what has happened in the past, you must be a warrior. This particular woman who I was working with today. She has a seven-year-old child, as I was just saying. And I said to her, now, if someone comes through the door and begins to abuse or kick your child, are you going to be the warrior? Are you going to stand up and be the warrior for this little girl? She said, of course I would. I said, well, it is the soul that can be back there in time and space and give the child who has a body the right to be a warrior and stand up and no one is hurt and no one is harmed. It's simply changing the ripples of energy that are happening, the frequencies of vibration that are rippling through the ocean. The child can do it. The soul can give him the light and the power. But to get there, the soul has to move through the emotion back through time, space, and to be able to stand there beside the child and say, I am the one that created you. I am the one that brought you into life. I am your father, your mother. I am your source. And giving it energy so that it can say to those interlopers who try to steal it from its source energy, can simply be removed without hurting them or harming them. Simply energy is being exchanged. It's just like the sun. Someone said, well, that sounds kind of violent. And I said, well, when you think when the sun simply explodes with all those amazing corona energies, it is simply life force now coming to the earth. It looks violent, but it's simply life force flowing to us. It's our perception that this is violent, that this is terrible. And that's our perception because of our emotion. 
If we truly know and live within the ocean of oneness, we can see that whatever is happening, people are choosing it because it is helping them grow and unfold within their emotional bodies. They are looking to love themselves. And it looks chaotic in the world today, no doubt about it. But that is simply because so much light is arising forth that the chaos is simply being revealed so that it can be taken care of, so that it can learn to dance with itself and either remove itself from the planet or change. It's simply that simple. So emotions, my friend, they're the key, the key to enlightenment, the key to happiness, the key to prosperity, to loving relationships, and it's zero to seven. And so when you're not aware of the emotion, the child simply gets out his little cell phone and begins to give you a jingle on your cell phone, on a cell phone, and the jingle is simply an emotion. And you might feel lonely or sad or frustrated or unhappy, whatever it is. It's simply the child saying, I'm back there in time, space. I'm in a place where I don't want to be right now. I need some help. Come with the soul and bring me light and love. And then through that emotion, we then get to love and have more joy in the now, which then is our ripple from then forward. So one of the things that assists us greatly in this work is our breath work because we are feeling, and that's the key word, we are feeling that when we're breathing, we're literally summoning source into this dimension. Source is beyond time space. Source is eternal. It's the ocean of complete cosmic oneness that we're swimming in. But we have an opening and that opens within the heart chakra. It is activated through the star tetrahedron when power and love are becoming unified. And as that is happening, we are then opening the doorway into the void where all creation is now seeking to arise forth, to expand itself into dimensional reality. And so as we're breathing in, we're breathing source into this dimension. And because whatever we focus upon with the mind, the mind is light. I am seeing and focusing upon the feeling of golden radiance flowing from me. That's what we create. That's the star tetrahedron. Whatever we focus upon, give light to, and imagine it happens. If we're giving light to sadness, it increases the sadness. If we're giving light to problems, it creates more problems. That's why when we deal with the emotion, we can give light to joy and peace and happiness and prosperity and be the light for the world. That's why we're here. So let's do about five minutes of deep breathing. I'll simply take you through the experience. As you're doing the breath work, as well as doing the meditation, I'd like to invite you to feel yourself sitting right at the doorway. That you are the void and you are the dimensions of living light. And so here's almost like this two sides of a coin. Here is the void. I'm sitting in the doorway, but I'm also the void that is then ushering liquid light into this dimension. And so I'm always here at the doorway, breathing and creating. So let's close the eyes and feel the body relaxing. And to be aware of the breath. And with the slow, deep inhalation, we are sitting at the doorway, breathing source into this dimension. That which I focus upon and feel becomes real. I see liquid living light 
emanating from all around me, up, down, front, back, all around. I am the living light within the ocean of oneness. The physical sun is the light within an ocean of oneness. And it is the light of the sun that gives light to earth. And we upon earth can give light to those animal, plant, all creation. And I sit at the doorway, the deep silence of the void behind me, and I breathe it in, and I see it become sparkling, effervescent light. Like the physical sun, I am the light, radiant, My body is simply the instrument that allows me to sit at the doorway of the void, breathing source into this dimension. to become sparkling effervescent light. I feel the void as pure, loving silence, eternal. I am the void and I am the living light. And my breath brings the source from one dimension into this living. And I breathe. The silence at the doorway is profound. It is eternal. And by simply focusing my mind and feeling, I bring liquid golden light. Dancing with radiance into this world of living light. Breath is the key. I am breathing with the universe. Breath is spirit. Breath is life. And from the silence of the doorway, the void, I breathe and emanate peace, living light. Every breath is a breath from the void. And when I am conscious of this fact, I breathe liquid golden light. And a couple of more deep, deep breaths, sitting at the void, the doorway. The eternal void behind, liquid living light before me, creator being I am.
And then very easily now, as it feels comfortable, you can begin to feel yourself slowly coming back more and more into the now. The star tetrahedron divine masculine power above divine feminine love beneath the focusing of attention power and love and feeling open the doorway and source arises forth I am the living light the Christ matrix, creator being, bringing source into this dimension and expanding the possibilities of creation. I'll simply take you through the formation of the star tetrahedron. And once again, I invite you to sit at the doorway within the center of the heart chakra and observe the movement of the star tetrahedron that holographically emanates source into manifestation. So by simply closing the eyes, we feel the body relaxing again. When we observe our breath, the mind is silent. When it is silent, it is focused. I bring my attention between the eyebrows and drawing a line straight back. the approximate center point of the head where I ignite the light. The light of the soul within the pineal gland, outpost of the divine and sacred being I am. And holding attention here, light increasing What I focus upon, imagine, and love becomes real. Light filling the head. I can focus the light to the heart chakra, the sternum, and illuminate what already exists Star tetrahedron with divine masculine power above, turning left to right. Lower triangulation of divine feminine love, turning right to left. As it turns, the doorway opens within the heart chakra into the void, and there I sit. Breathing light and life into this dimension. I will join with you and together we will create light imminent flowing into the world.
And very easily now. Slowly coming back more and more into the moment. Of the now. So let's be aware of any emotions that might arise forth with the next couple of weeks and just kind of feel how we can begin to move through them without any judgment or criticism and then find ourselves back there in time and space and change that ripple of ignorance. Okay. Thank you very much, my friends, and we'll see you soon.